Okay, so 15 years from now, I'm gonna be 52. Oh my gosh. Okay, how old is pudding gonna be? 19! Ah! Oh my gosh. Oh, I just got all sweaty just now. Hey guys, it's Chika. Minasan konnichiwa. Chika desu. So I just got done filming a little birthday message video for YouTube in Asia Pacific because it is their 15th birthday. And I was given a few questions to answer for the video. And I thought it would be interesting to go through them and share with you guys my answers because it kind of reflects back on 15 years of YouTube and also 15 years ahead. So I thought it'd be Kind of a good way for you guys to know more about me and to know a little bit more about what I'm thinking. So yeah, here goes. Let's go through the questions. So what were you up to 15 years ago? Were you using YouTube already? So I'm turning 38 this year. So 15 years ago, I was 22, 23. 23, I had just graduated from university and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Well, that's not necessarily true. After graduating from the University of Washington, I actually wanted to run my own business. I wanted to start a nail salon, like an upscale nail salon where you can like have drinks and get pedicures and drinks and do nails, a social gathering place. I actually majored in business. So that was kind of what I was planning my whole senior year. There was a business plan competition for one of my classes which I actually ended up winning. So I had my heart set on starting this business when I graduated, but when I actually did graduate, I had second thoughts and I was like, well, maybe I should, you know, do something first and kind of gain independence and stability from my parents first before, you know, starting this new, you know, business and I'll probably have to rely on them more. And so I kind of put that idea to the side and that's when my dad was like, why don't you go back to Japan? And I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. I had no idea what I was gonna do here, but the original plan was to just be here for like six months and discover myself. Um, but I ended up getting a job at a consulting firm and staying till now. Getting married here, having kids here. So I've been here for like 15 years. Oh my gosh, it's been 15 years. Um, was I using YouTube at the time? I was not on YouTube yet, but I was definitely using YouTube. Back then, it was less about channels and like personalities. I think there were more like just random videos everywhere. <laughs> and I remember distinctly two videos that I watched. One was like how to iron a shirt. I started working um, at the consulting firm and I had to wear sort of semi-formal, you know, attire. So ironing a shirt and also, I was going to a fireworks show where you wear like a summer kimono called a yukata. And um, I didn't really know that you're supposed to get kimonos put on you professionally. I figured, I was like, how hard could it be to like to tie a belt? Um, it was really, really hard. I watched YouTube and somehow got through it. But by the end of the night, my kimono was basically falling off. So since then I get my kimonos professionally put on me. But thanks to YouTube, I managed to get to the fireworks festival on time in somewhat decent form. What was your first impression of YouTube as a creator? So a few years after that, I started uploading my own videos. And when I first started making videos, I used YouTube as a server. There's no concept of channels or subscribers. It was just a place where I could upload and get a share link, which I would then post on Facebook to share with my friends. I didn't know that just putting videos on YouTube would reach people. Then a few months down the road, I saw that I had more subscribers on YouTube than I had friends on Facebook. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Something seems weird. People that don't know me are watching my videos. That's crazy. Tell us about the moment when you realize that YouTube can be a career for you. I started in 2011. In 2013, I had a couple of things happen. One, I was featured in a documentary series on NHK, the education channel. That was a big step. I didn't really tell anybody at work that I was doing this. I would film before and after I'd go to work, but I didn't share that with any of my coworkers or my bosses. It was just kind of a thing that I did secretly. So when I got offered to be on TV, I was like, okay, well, that's not gonna be a secret anymore. They first wanted to feature me as someone that was 
know, had a full-time job at a consulting firm, but also doing YouTube on the side. Like they wanted to feature both worlds for me, but I was like, I'm not really comfortable with that. So that was when I kind of needed to make the decision, do one or the other. And around the same time, I actually got approached by a brand. It was a company that provided English learning services. And that's when I realized that, oh, it's not just my viewers that find value in my content, but these like companies are finding my channel valuable. Hmm, I think I'm onto something, like maybe this could work. And so a combination of those things just made me say, hey, I think it's time to quit my day job. And plus, you know, I liked all the people I worked with and I was at the consulting firm for six years and I learned so much and it was such a great experience, but I didn't feel like I was that great at it. It wasn't my calling. So I was ready to try something new. What is the biggest change you've seen on YouTube? Mm, biggest change? Well, recently, yeah, um, shorts. <laughs> it's a big change. I have been making long videos, long horizontal videos for years. And all of a sudden, everyone wants you to make vertical short videos. I didn't like it at first, honestly, because I thought TikTok is great because that's like the format they started in. And Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, what? Really? A tab with just short videos? Like, I was a little upset at first because I wanted YouTube to kind of keep its core thing, which has been like videos like we've been making. And I was just like, it's just turning into TikTok. Yeah, and I, I was like, you know, I've been putting so much time and effort into these like longer videos and all of a sudden they're like featuring so many shorts. I remember Vine, six second videos. I got into that for a while, but short videos are so difficult. It's just a completely different way of approaching it. So that's been a big change and a challenge, but it's actually been a fun one. If you guys have seen my recent shorts, I've been uploading a lot of conversations with Pudding. If I can get the conversation on camera, I'll, I'd share that. But if I can't, then I would reenact it and play Pudding. So I think I've finally found a format that I have fun making. But until then it was like, I felt like I was trying really hard and like it wasn't like something I wanted to do. I know it's good for the algorithm and I know it's good for numbers to do shorts, um, but I can't just be motivated by numbers. Like I have to like wanna do it or I have to have fun. That's like me. So now that I've kind of figured it out or like found a format, I'm kind of okay with it. It just gives you another way to express yourself. and. Once I found that, it's actually helped me kind of balance myself because the longer videos take so long to edit and having Pudding and Clover now, I have a lot less time so I can kind of balance my content. If I just don't have the time to do a full video, I can do a short. So I think I've finally found a way to like kind of leverage this new tool and this new feature to my advantage. So that's good. It's just adapting. I know change is hard at first, like I honestly like didn't like that change at first, but you gotta adapt. I always say change is the only constant. You can complain about it and not like it, but it's gonna keep changing. So you might as well get on and figure it out. What is something that you used to do on YouTube, but no longer now? Well, okay, so a big one is comments, right? The comment section, that is the biggest thing that I used to have that don't anymore. And I'm very sad about it. As you guys know, I turned my comments off two years ago when our channel kind of went up in flames upon our return from Malaysia. And I've had to turn it off because it just became a horrible place. And not just for me, but for everyone involved, like people that tried to support us would kind of get hate and it was just messy and terrible and hateful. So we got rid of that. I don't regret the decision. I think it's healthy for us and for everyone, but it is still sad because up until then, my videos were kind of complete once I got your feedback and we had your comments and it was like, oh, this is now a video. That is something that I am upset about, but at the same time, it's been a lot less stressful, I do have to say. Before, I would upload a video and just like constantly look at comments and be like, you know, make sure there wasn't anything. And 
of course it was fun to see all of your comments and I love that part, but at the same time, it was also this like kind of anxiety, right? Like what if, you know, someone doesn't like it or I get this negative feedback. Um, there was always this constant worry, even before everything happened on our channel. When you have a lot of people watching what you do, it can be a little scary. So I definitely don't have that stress anymore. Uh, but at the same time, it's it makes me like wonder, I'm like, do people like it? Do you guys like it? But I've been using, you know, Instagram and other ways, message forms to get your feedback. So I don't feel like I've just like shut off and I can't communicate with you guys anymore. I also do premieres so that we can live chat while we're watching that first play. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to open up the comment section someday. I'm trying to figure out a good way to do it, but baby steps. Okay, last question. What do you think YouTube will be like 15 years from now? Wow, 15 years. I mean, at first I was thinking about this question as, okay, so 15 years from now, I'm gonna be 52. Oh my gosh. But I then started thinking about it like, okay, how old is Pudding gonna be? So she's almost four. So 15 years, she's gonna be 19. 19! Ah, that is crazy and scary. And, oh my gosh. Oh, I just got all sweaty just now. Um, so I have, I have no idea what's gonna happen 15 years from now. That's just like a loaded question. I hope that YouTube continues to just be our like entryway, our portal to the world as it has been, especially with us doing travel videos. Like I've always seen my channel as a place for you guys to kind of like go on our journeys and trips with us to see more of the world through video. YouTube has been a great place for us to see the world and explore the world without even taking a step out of our house. And with that said, I hope that the experience becomes more immersive and more interactive. And we don't continue watching it on a flat surface. I hope that we can like jump in and wow, you're there, like 360 degrees videos. I and mean, we we already have 360 videos and 180 videos. I've made some of them, but I mean, it's still really clunky, right? And very far from being seamless. So I hope that in 15 years, it's just gonna be normal to see things like that. You know, with talks of the metaverse and things, I, I think we'll probably get there. I don't want clunky goggles though, or headsets. Hopefully that's all gone. I don't know, maybe it'll just be like minority report. You'll just be touching like the air and moving things from the air. And I hope it just, utilizes all the technology and the tools that we have to uh, give us a better, more epic experience is what I'm hoping happens. But who knows, like 15 years from now, I might be watching this video and be like, what are you talking about, Chica? Like, we're so ahead of that. Who knows? I don't know if this is something that YouTube should, be, should do, but it'd be nice for like everything that you see to just be recorded automatically. Like, in a database somewhere, and then it just gets edited <laughs> and then uploaded to YouTube. Like I don't have to edit. I just have to like, maybe um, I'll look at something and if I like it, like some neurons in my brain will be like excited. And so it'll know which scenes I enjoyed and then it'll like use an algorithm to edit those favorite scenes. And there you go. That would make my life so much easier. Oh, and add subtitles too. That, the language thing should be very different 15 years from now, I think. Subtitling videos is like the worst. Um, it's like, I'm done! And there's like, oh, it's a subtitle. I have help with it, but I'm guessing it'll be very different 15 years from now. So we'll see what happens with that. But whatever shape or form it takes, as I said, I hope that YouTube will continue to be like a portal for us to discover the world and also a place where creators can come and discover themselves as I have and build a platform, a home for us to do what we love. It's not as easy and great as that sounds. There's bumps and uh, lots of challenges, but at the end of the day, I feel like I have been given so much freedom because of YouTube and the work that I do, you know, getting to travel for a living is amazing. I just wish that I didn't have to edit all my trips or like think about filming all the time. So that whole, um, yeah, the brain link database and editing technology would be great, but still, how cool, right? So I, I hope that YouTube continues to find ways to do that for creators. 
Maybe for our pudding when she's 19. Oh my gosh, who knows? I mean, what, how is she gonna be using YouTube? Crazy, but exciting. There you go! I had fun answering and thinking about these questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, give us a big like and also uh, send me any messages on the message form. I'm also on Instagram and I often will uh, post feedback boxes in my stories. So you can contact me that way. Let me know what you think. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye!